Ready Player One, what a story. Have any of you read it too? I was inspired, so I created a version of the tracks, and along the way I figured out some cool new Blender features that allow for massive environments with a relatively short amount of time. Let's get into it. I started with the default cube. I scaled it down, then raised it up so it sits on the ground, then set the origin to the 3D cursor, which is sitting at zero. This allows us to scale up and not down, while keeping everything on the ground. That's super important for the stuff we're going to do later. I scaled it up to about 6 meters, which is roughly about a story, and then moved it over about 5 meters on the Y and down 5 on the X, then set the origin to 3D cursor again. This let me mirror on the X and Y, so I got 4 supports. Next, I made it into I-beams because, well, construction. This is easy as you hit tab, then control R to loop cut, and then slide it around and scale in. Done, I-beam. And because it's mirrored, you get four for the price of one, which is a deal in most cultures. Next, I did the same thing and made supports by extruding out and moving the parts up and flattening the ends. Then I made a platform out of a plane and moved it up and then extruded it to give it some thickness. After that, I just made more loop cuts, selected polygons, and used bridge edge loops to create the connected pieces. This just made it look more, I, I don't know, more something. I'll probably add a bevel modifier later for the edges, but we'll see. Once I had that in place, it was time to build the system that would allow me to quickly duplicate this thing into the stacks we saw in Ready Player One. Like my building facade video, I dropped in a piece of geometry that we can put the geometry nodes modifier on. This time, I used a single vert. This just lets me keep things simple and have a clickable thing in the outliner that contains my system. I renamed the single vert Geonodes, but it can really be anything, it's totally not important. On with the show. Oops, I had to join the plane with the stand because I, I, I had the dumb and, and I forgot. Notice here that I'd named the stand Stand01 and put it in a new collection named Stands. This is important, remember this for later. Now, the system. Like the building facade one, this is simple and not meant to wow the Blender genius people out there, but it's meant to just work and not take forever to build. I wanted a system that I can control vertical stacks and have the option for horizontals as well. Therefore, I created a mesh line and plugged it into the group output, then added a transform and rotated it negative 90 on the x-axis. This is our horizontal control. Then I duplicated the mesh line, stood it up straight, and added an instance on points to the chain after the transform. This allows us to scatter the second line on the first. Plug the mesh from the mesh line into instance on the instance on points, and there, you now have a row of lines that you can control with a count on the first mesh line. Housekeeping time. Now, between the vertical mesh line and the instance on points node, I added another instance on points node. This will let us copy the stands onto the points and create stacks. I dragged the stacks collection into the workplace and connected geometry out from the red collection node on the instance of the instance on points and got a mess. If I go now and add 12 to the z-axis of the mesh line offset value, it stacks like, I, 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 don't, I don't know, it, it, it just stacks. The horizontal still sucked, so I went to the original horizontal mesh line and set the z-offset there to 24. I was happy. I'm totally jumping tenses here, sorry about that. These are cool, but they aren't messy, and we want messy because the world is messy. It doesn't have to be, but, you know, humans, right? So I wanted to rotate these. I threw in a rotate instances node after the instance on points node. And when I played with the Z rotation, which is the only axis we should ever rotate these things on, it rotated them all. Hmm, that's a problem. What to do, what to do? I know, I could use a random value node. I put one down, changed it to vector because rotation, three, three values, vector, then hooked it up to rotation, zeroed out the max rotations and played with the Z. And yeah, I love it when a plan comes together. I took the horizontal back to 1 and played with the minimum value on the spin as well. Cool, messy, just like humans. Silly creatures. I cleaned it up here by selecting everything but the output and hitting Ctrl G to group it. This keeps things neat and also lets us have one node with simple controls on it. To set these up, I dove back inside and hooked up every control I'd wanted to the group input. Like this. Including the collections, which allows us to switch collections at the top level and therefore switch out our contents. Pretty cool. One thing I wanted, though, was access to the Z rotation, but if I plugged that in, I'd get three messy values on my group node. So I added in a combined XYZ node, plugged that into the max on the random value, then I got the Z value by itself, then plugged that into the out. There, cool. A nice simple system for making a mess. I have all this up on Patreon too if you want, the, the link's below. Now, I wanted lots of these things because 
one is just boring. I made a grid object. Yeah, you could use the grid primitive in geometry nodes, but I wanted one outside for a couple of reasons you'll see in a bit. I dropped the grid into the geometry nodes window, then hooked that up to a new instance on points node, then plugged the node system into the instance, and there, lots of instances. I changed the color for you so you could see this better. Do you, do you like it? Let, let me know in the comments if, if you like yellow. I added a rotate instances node to randomize the rotation of these, but they were all the same height, which was boring again. So what to do? I know. I could enter a join geometry node, then duplicate my system and join both together. Then, if I selected pick instances on the instance on points node, I got different heights, provided I set different heights on the system nodes. Sweet! Yellow hurt my eyes, so I changed it back to black. Now, about the boring grid pattern. Here's one reason I wanted to use a grid outside of the system. I broke up the pattern by adding a displace modifier to the grid with a cloud texture on the X, Y, and Z axes separately. This allowed me to control the displacement in an art directable way, and it, it just worked. Now I needed some trailers because people, people won't just live on scaffolding. I, I mean, they might, but like, let's give them homes because it's, it's who we are. I'll gloss through this as it's just standard modeling. I basically created a box, stretched it, added cuts, inset, extruded, added more cuts for doors and windows, extruded a roof, added shutters on some windows, UV unwrapped things, added a procedural shader for shingles, dirtied them up, added more shaders, and assigned them. It's really all just standard modeling and texturing stuff that you can find on thousands of daily Blender tutorial uploads. I, I chose to procedurally shade this because at the time it was faster than finding images of trailers, which would look better anyway, but yeah, this was just proof of concept at this point. I also put it on a platform and gave it some scaffolding using a stretched cube and the wireframe modifier. What an awesome tool that is. I have a video here showing that process from like three years ago or something. Oh, I modeled a quick staircase too by just extruding and copying and pasting and copying and pasting. Really simple stuff is these are pretty far away, at least I think they are. To test that, I just added the model of the mobile home into the stacks collection and ooh, it worked. To look dev, I added some fog with a box and a volume shader. These things are super sensitive now, so if you add in a map range node and remap the values from 0 to 100 to like 0 to 1, the value control will allow you to make incremental changes that you'll actually see, like my planet video before the fog broke. The Musgrave texture here just breaks up the fog a little bit and the color ramp helps tweak it. I further tested this with an HDRI image to see what some lighting would do and I was happy that it was getting somewhere, so like I decided to make it into a video. Now I did some house cleaning. I put the mobile into a collection called mobiles and duplicated them, altering them slightly, and I gave them slightly different textures and rotations. Then I needed some set dressing, so I modeled a satellite dish to scatter around. I attached it to the stands so it would go with most of them. They usually all face southwest, at least in the US, but whatever, like this is fiction. I, I, I didn't care at the moment. I also didn't want to build a new system just for these, because yeah. I also made some garbage cans because they need to toss out their garbage and just throwing it over the edge would be fun. I mean, I mean wrong. It would, it would be wrong. I duplicated them here and not bad. Lastly, I added some manual set dressing. I modeled some water tanks, exhaust tubes, and pulled in some models of air conditioners and stools and stuff and just littered them around a bit. For the lower areas, I'd added some lights into the homes and around some areas just to add some interest in life to the darker areas of the image. Then I added a PBR texture to the ground in order to give it some details. Once I darkened it with a brightness and contrast node on the color channel, it looked better. Lastly, I'd wanted a city background, so I'd pulled in some skyscrapers that I'd had for years, just gave to my Patreons by the way, and scattered them on a grid using the same techniques I just showed you. Once I was happy, and they were scattered and rotated decently, I animated the camera and rendered. After some color correction and resolve, not bad. I think I'll keep this one and add more crap to it just to round it out. Subscribe if you want, I'd love to have you in the community. Thanks, and stay safe.